This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed, and therefore should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discretion, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn of through this show. I'm Renata Maniachi, and this is Let's Get Metaphysical. In this episode, Ren interviews Katherine Krupka about spiritual response therapy, or SRT. Greetings, metaphysicians. I'm excited for our episode today. We are speaking with a dear friend and colleague and mentor of mine, Katherine Krupka. Today, we'll be speaking with her about spiritual response therapy, though she has many other talents. Catherine helps people awaken to their truest selves and consciously create lives of purpose, fulfillment, and impact. Her work brings together ancient wisdom and modern science, biochemistry, energy, and consciousness studies. Her work synthesizes more than a dozen modalities and approaches, including being a naturopathic doctor, a clinical aromatherapist, and practitioner in several energy therapies, including healing touch, Reiki, shamanic journeying, and spiritual response therapy. She is also an interfaith and interspiritual minister and has used quantum bioresonance system, matrix energies, the Ewan method, and lots more. Like many in the healing and spiritual arts, Catherine's journey started with her own healing. She started out as a U.S. diplomat and then an international business consultant. She worked in more than 10 countries and ran programs reaching 100 million people and led the operations for a global consultancy in Moscow where the Russian oligarchs were among her clients. Through spiritual awakenings, physical healings, and tons of study and experimentation in her own life, Catherine has cultivated deep spiritual and energetic guidance systems and helped thousands of people identify and clear deep unconscious blocks, reconnect with their truth, and move into purposefully creating the lives they desire. Catherine works with individual and group clients and teaches in the U.S. and internationally. I personally have been looking forward to this episode for quite some time as spiritual response therapy is one of the modalities that I use almost every day for myself and most days with clients. And Catherine Krupka was my teacher for spiritual response therapy. She can explain it better than anyone else I know. So, are you ready? Then let's get meta. Hello, metaphysicians. We're here today in Washington, D.C., and I have the pleasure of talking to a dear friend and colleague and mentor and instructor and just so many things. Katherine Krupka is so many things to me and comes with so many beautiful gifts. And today we get to talk about one of those amazing gifts called spiritual response therapy, commonly known as SRT. So we will be referring to that as both spiritual response therapy and SRT. Catherine, thank you so much for letting me interview you today. I'm so excited to be with you and to do this. I love your podcast. Yay! Excellent. I, I just love this. And I've been actually, for everyone out there, I've been waiting to interview Catherine because I've, you've been on the list forever. So Catherine, I start out all of my podcasts just by asking if you have an experience that you would like to share with us that you feel was metaphysical in nature. And knowing you, I'm sure you have many to choose from. (laughs) Pretty much every day. Right. (laughs) And I think one of my favorites and one of the things that was sort of most, you know, dramatic or eye-catching for me was probably three or four years ago, probably three years ago, and I was leaving a workshop in Boston and needing to get to the airport, I completely lost track of time, looked at my phone to see the time and realized that the time I was looking at at that moment was the time I needed to be at the airport in order to get my flight. So there's no human way that I could be, like, and I still had to get the train and go, you know, all the way out, et cetera. So like, there was no human way for me to be there. So something said, go anyway and just catch a later flight. Right. So I sat on the train and I just kind of meditated and I wasn't looking at the clock. I wasn't, oh my gosh, I was just sitting with it and, you know, watching whatever. Uh, And I got there and got up to the check-in counter and it was the exact time that it was when I left. Wow. Right. 
So it was four that I needed to be there. It was four when I left, and it was four when I got there, right? And I didn't switch time zones from downtown yeah. to the airport. So I thought, okay, that's strange enough, and I was pretty excited about it. And of course, you know, express my gratitude and everything to those that take care of this, or however we think of that. Totally. What was more amazing, though, is a few days later, I was talking to a friend of mine who'd been out in California that same day, and who had been on the freeway and realized she had an extra hour on her hands before a meeting, but she really didn't want to have that extra hour because she didn't have anything to do with it and she needed to get there. And she was saying how she got to this meeting and she realized that she had lost an hour. <laughs> and so we compared notes and actually realized that we traded hours, basically. The same wow. hour she lost was the same hour that I got. Right. So we were both um, like duly wowed right. uh, and totally psyched by the entire experience and grateful to each other because we served each other's needs by yeah. trading hours that day. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. That's amazing. That's a good one. I like that one. It's a great one. And like timeline hops, I, I've experienced just little pieces of that sometimes. I don't think anything quite as dramatic yet, but I've had people in my sphere lately who have experienced similar timeline hops, just like boom, an hour is gone, or boom, several hours are gone, or or have been added, or vice versa. And so that whole thing is really interesting to me, and I definitely want to dig deeper into, um, probably in a later episode, about somebody who knows what they're talking You know, like somebody the who... The elasticity who, of time. Exactly. I love it, yes. And there's classes about that, too. So yes, there are. Thank you. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> maybe that's why I, I like, like those classes. Oh, my gosh. No, thank you. That's a wonderful, that's a great way to start. It's It's amazing. So let's jump into what is spiritual response therapy and yeah. how does spiritual response therapy work? Great questions. <laughs> <laughs> One could spend a while on these. So what it is, it's a, I hesitate to call it energy healing because it doesn't, we're not running energy like one would in healing touch or Reiki or something like that, just to make that distinction. But it is a, a method that serves one's reaching one's wholeness, right? Mm -hmm. One's healing, quote unquote, through what we would consider energetic or non-physical, metaphysical, right? right? Metaphysical means. It was brought through by a gentleman named Robert Detzler, who was a unity minister, and he brought it through back in the 80s. Um, and it's been used since then. The idea is my high self as a practitioner and your high self, for instance, as a client, are working together. Like they're, you know, we're sitting across the table from one another and our high selves are sitting there having tea or having a chat also. Both of them knowing all there is to know, right, about us, for us, and about the world as it relates to us and vice versa. So whatever I'm having go on in my experience that I would like to see change or that I would like to know more about, or not even if there's something wrong, quote unquote, but if I would like to experience more of X in my life or to align my personality's growth with my spiritual growth, right? All of those things can be done because we're working at the level of the subconscious and the unconscious, right? Mm -hmm. I think of it as like how your computer, before you even buy it, has stuff that's already loaded. Right. So I don't know what that is. I don't know how to access it. I don't have any control over it, but it totally affects my experience as a user, right? So this gives us, SRT gives us an entry point to that those programs that are on there, that code that exists there that may have become corrupted over the years or that may have gotten out of date or missed an update or whatever, to be able to remove things, delete things, correct things, or add things that create a, a more aligned, a more harmonious, a more healthy, quote unquote, a more whole experience for the person it's being done for. I would say the goal of it always is to create greater freedom for a person and greater choice for a person because it's all this stuff that hangs out in the subconscious and unconscious that limits our ability to truly be at choice, that limits our ability to completely be free, right? If I'm working from an old script that maybe comes from my ancestry, you know, five generations ago or 500 generations ago, I don't know that I'm limited, but I'm actually limited in my expression, right? Mm. So in my relationships and my work and my physical body and my physical health, it shows up in all of these places. When we can remove that, I am free, right? So our goal 
with SRT is not so much to fix something, uh, but more to allow somebody's complete and total truth, freedom, and choice. Right, to be, to come forward by removing programs, so to speak, you could call them programs, like on a computer, that just aren't working anymore, or maybe aren't being useful exactly. to the person anymore. Exactly, right? right? So we'll clear those things out of the way, delete that old code, get that old version of whatever software or something, to just to stay with the computer metaphor, off the drive, and then we come back to a clean drive, right? We right. come back to our original formation, our original blueprint. Where we can... The truth of who we are. The truth of who we are. As perfect creations of the universe or spirit or however you think of that. Right, absolutely. You know, how do you feel about this? Do you, because I know sometimes in the SRT language it says you'll reprogram, you put the program you want on there, or you know, you'll clear it out, clean hard drive, and then put on what you want it. How do you feel about that language? Is that, is that? You know, it's an interesting one. I think there's a time and a place for that and a time and a place for not that. Right, <laughs> no, definitely. Right? There's a time and a place for that. If I'm, and I work with people and someone's, you know, trying to get their book out or wanting to do something with their business or develop a particular relationship or something, right? They have a, an idea and a vision in mind that they would like to experience. Then we can support with energies, not so much programs, but we would support with energies and expressions and alignments right. that will facilitate that experience for them. So it's not like we're creating a program so much as it is we are enhancing their energetic alignment with what it is that they are seeking to create. Sure. And uh, on an ultimate level, we're really stripping everything away so that we're back in our original perfect form. Right, exactly. Oh, I love so that's that. a yes and. <laughs> yeah, yes and, of course. And it, it, it's always both, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> everything. That's great. So for those listeners who haven't seen or heard of spiritual response therapy before, what does an SRT session look like? Well... It could look weird if it's your first one. The way it works is we have a set of 32 or more charts, which are pieces of paper with a fan image on it with information in each little segment of the fan. The practitioner will use a pendulum, which has no power in itself, unlike many people think, but truly is a, an instrument that expresses uh, vibrations that are consistent with with the energies in the system and what are coming through. So we're using the charts and the pendulum to access information about and for the person that we're working with, or the group, or the item, or the object, or the business. This can be used with anything. Beautiful. Thank you. No, that's that's a great visual. And like my first time having SRT was with you four-ish years ago now? That 14, long 15, already? 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah, like four, four and a half years ago? Yeah, four and a half years ago, because it was the beginning of January 2014, I think. And that was my first time seeing anything like that. So yeah, it does, it can look really weird at first. And now, you know, I am an SRT practitioner, thanks to you, you know, you taught, you, you, everybody, Catherine Krupka taught me how to do SRT. And it's just this system that is fundamentally can just clear things for you. It can clear blocks that just hold you back in all aspects of your life. And yet, even when I get clients for SRT, you know, I always kind of feel the need to say, this might look like something you've never seen before. And, and that's okay. And usually people who, you know, sign up for SRT, I'm sure you get this too, they're ready for it on some level. I find that by the time when someone reaches me, for whatever reason, they're, they're ready for whatever's coming through that day. <laughs> Even if they've never seen anything like that, some part of their subconscious is just like, all right, exactly. I'm here, I'm ready to see this thing. It's yeah. totally cool. That's amazing. So what was your introduction to spiritual response therapy? You know, my aunt, who is often, she's one of those souls that is like a connector and facilitator for so many people, uh, and she heard about SRT and someone was doing a demo and then a class uh, in the city that she lives in, and she went to it and said, this looks pretty cool, and called me and told me about it, and instantly, like, you know how you just get that feeling like, this is it, Definitely. I need to do this. And, and within like two weeks, I found a class and was up in New Jersey doing a class nice. there and, and just went on and on through my certification and then through the teacher training Excellent. and certification pretty quickly after that. I just, it was felt so resonant for me. It felt so natural. It was like, oh, of course, kind of one of those things where it feels like you already know it and it's just like you're being shown how to remember it or something. Yes. It was one of those things for me. 
I love that you just said all the things that you just said because that's how healing touch was for me and it's the only time I've ever experienced that and like you just mirrored like what that experience was for you with SRT that's it's it's great thank you yes awesome how long ago was that ish wow that's a good question now <laughs> if I was teaching it already four and a half years ago I probably first learned it eight maybe even ten years ago wow cool yeah very cool how can SRT be helpful for folks and for whom, and you've touched on this already. Yeah, you know, removing removing programming, but um, how would how would you answer that even further? If you, you know, have an this idea? is uh, this is one of those things can, that can almost be difficult to to speak to because I haven't come across anyone or any situation yet where it was not useful. If I were going to concisely say why it's useful for so many things, it would be that it it like clears out the gap between what I am experiencing right now and what I am choosing to experience. And it is the deepest, fastest, uh, and most precise instrument that I have found among the many things I've learned so far um, to, get, to give us access uh, and to close that gap. And that gap can be anything from you know, someone experiencing a health situation uh, that they would like to see change. Uh, I've used it to help people sell their house, um, to get a book published, to create a successful business, to get in or get out of relationships. Um, uh, like for all, for you know, move forward on their spiritual path. There's really nothing that it cannot be useful because, because at the very, very root of the gap between what we would like to experience and what we are experiencing, the very root of that boils down to a very few things that exist at the subconscious or unconscious level and that are not at the, in the physical body or in the conscious mind, but at that place that is just oh so much deeper. And so SRT can be useful because it goes into that place, gives us access to this, you know, like the black box on an airplane or something, right? It gives us, I'm not sure that's a good metaphor, but um, uh, <laughs> I it see gives where us, you're going with it that. Gives it gives us it, access it, to that place where we would normally never be able to go, right? right? And, and allow us to make changes there that, like I said, close the gap between what I'm experiencing now and what I'm choosing to experience. And therefore, it can be useful truly for anybody, no matter, and for organizations. I've used it for companies and mm -hmm. for a nonprofit group, and so it can be like for anything and for anyone. Dare I say that I may have used it for government before? <laughs> yeah, people do that. <laughs> you know, just taking for government for the world. People use it for out. the earth, exactly all the for time. the earth, for the climate. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it it can apply to anything. Uh, because your condo the ultimate information source, right, the ultimate database that runs the entire universe, basically, we're accessing that spot, right? And we're coming, we're accessing that spot and working in that area. So there's no reason that we can't affect something as tiny as, you know, my cat or something as large as the planet. Right. I love that. And... While you were talking about that, it reminded me or wanted to bring forward that as I was learning SRT in between like the last four years when I first started learning it as a modality, my, my connection to source or spirit or my high self, whatever word you'd like to insert there, has gotten so strong because SRT, like the act of doing SRT makes you so crystal clear that you know, we have to be in a certain mindset and a certain level of consciousness when we're doing this work so that we can clear things that happened in the levels below that, so to speak. And so it has, it has made me so clear that I know when, I'm not, when my ego is getting in on something. And not only when I'm working, that bleeds over into when I'm not doing SRT, when I'm going about my everyday life, it makes it more clear to see Okay, am I in am I in my highest level of consciousness right now, or like is my ego coming into this experience right now? And like, how can I make this more true for me and more authentic for me? And I just wanted to share that because the act of doing SRT has been so clarifying. I, in I like other parts. I completely agree, and I would say that as a practitioner and as someone who who does it 
uh, not just receives it. That's been one of the hugely valuable things for me. And I will also say that in my practice, where I use you know a ton of different approaches and methods and whatever, I almost always start with SRT mm -hmm. because of the way that the way the system and the way that it's set up, the way it's so precisely and so accurately aligns me and my client with our highest source of information and pulls my personality, right? Catherine as a personality who's got, you know, plenty of weird stuff going on um, and has me operating solely from that place of clarity and the same for my client. And so no matter what I'm doing with someone, I almost always start with SRT, at least for that, that, that piece of it that makes sure that we're both in the right place to be able to do the most, do the best possible work. Absolutely, and I, I do the same thing too. It's just, it, it helps you get to the clear space and, the, and take you out of yourself, out of your ego, out of your personality to move forward. And, and the person too, because we're not just clearing ourselves to that highest place, you're clearing the person that you're working with as well or helping them help it to facilitate that clearing so that they can also um, reach this place of clarity and they start to get information. Absolutely. And they start to have insights about themselves, even as you're doing the work, but they're getting the insight themselves because they're out of their own way. They're out of their own personality and they're out of their own ego way. It's a beautiful thing. How are you working with SRT now? I use it for myself almost every day for one thing, right? Because right. there's always something. I, you know, I used to have this idea like, Oh, then I'll be finished with all my internal work and I'll be great and life will be wonderful. Wouldn't that be and of awesome? course, like, it doesn't really work that way. And so, you know, like the, the proverbial onion, right? And, and so I continue to work on myself. Um, I use it with a lot of clients. It's easily done uh, via distance or in person. So it works nicely that way. And I'll, I'll use it for whatever people come to me. I also use it even when I'm not doing a quote unquote healing session, but if I'm just doing coaching work for someone or if I'm doing a consulting project, I'll still use it on that and I'll still use it in it, whether I talk about using it that way or not, right. uh, because I find it and it enhances pretty much anything that I'm working on or any project that's going on. Excellent. Yeah. And what I know you to be somebody who is just a renaissance person of multi-talents and multi-modalities. What else are you doing right now with folks and in your practice? Yeah, you know what, I, I use a lot of different methods from naturopathic methods to uh, coaching to essential oils, a lot of different energy and consciousness healing methods. And so the whole idea is how many different windows can we get into that place where we, where we can most uh, deeply and smoothly facilitate change for someone. And everybody's system wants something a little bit different. And so, you know, I've got a, a tool belt that facilitates variety, you know, depending on, on who's coming in and what it is that they want going on. Right. Amazing. And you do, you have, you have so many great tools, as you said, and it's not just different issues. It's not like, you know, eight different people could walk in with the same issue, but it's the way that they come in and the way that they need the approach that will work for them. And you have so Absolutely. many tools that help get there. That, that's how I, I think I started collecting so many tools is, is I started realizing, and of course, like I, you know, I love to learn and and I, I've always got more work to do on myself. And so it's like, okay, what's that next thing that gets me to the next place? And then we have the opportunity to use that in service to others as well. Absolutely. And you, you, you mentioned the onion before, and I just want to bring back to that really quickly because I use that analogy a lot with my clients when explaining the process of SRT. I, I like to say, you know, when I started this, when I was learning this, I really wanted to clear all my allergies. So that's one thing that I would do every day. And I would ask, you know, let's clear my allergies I know, and, and see what how many things came up for me to clear that day and go through them. And then, of course, you hope, oh, there's never going to be any ever again. You know, the first time I did that, maybe eight things came up because it was like, okay, all these things are ready to be cleared right now. And that's something about SRT. We can't clear anything that isn't, isn't ready to be cleared. You know, um, you might still be learning from something, you might still be growing from something. But so I would clear the, the, those first eight things. And then three months later, I'd go back and say, OK, is there anything else to clear for allergies? And of course, you're hoping, no, you're hoping it's done. You know, you, you're fine for the rest of your life. But you've reached a point, a level of evolution or a level of consciousness where something else has come up or two or three things have come up around allergies or at least what is coming up that looks like allergies, that's how it's being perceived by yourself and your body, 
um, that's now ready to be cleared three months later, a year later, four years later. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a process. We're never done. This is one of the most important learnings that came for me from training at SRT is what Robert Deschler called this idea of octaves of learning and that uh, I may clear, you know, separation programs or self-punishment programs or, you know, whatever kinds of things are coming up, like you were talking about with your allergies. And then four months, four years, 40 years later, I may come up and I look at the same thing. And I would find that so frustrating and couldn't understand. And he talked about it as, as just what you're saying, like between the time that I did this initially and this next time that I'm looking at it, I have grown. I have moved to another octave, right? That next level of consciousness or awareness, however we want to describe it. And these things exist there too, right? Maybe it looks like the same thing. Maybe it looks like something a little bit different, but related to that same experience or symptom. And I'm like, why am I doing this again? But it's like, it's that next level of the spiral. It's that next octave. And so even though it may still be an orange, right? Or whatever is showing up, uh, it's a different experience of it because we're at a different level of consciousness and then clearing it at that level. It's a very valuable idea um, and, uh, and very powerful work. Absolutely. I'm really glad that you brought that up because I, I, you know, I, just, I also want to say to our listeners, my allergies are better than they were four years ago. They are. Like I hardly ever have I have hardly ever have an allergic reaction, but it doesn't mean that I'll never have something come up when I ask about allergies again. So, you know, the I guess we haven't really talked about like effectiveness of SRT. I, as somebody who um, has received it and you know am a practitioner of it, it's so effective, but it can be really subtle. Like, how does it feel? You know, people are probably, what does this feel like? It's not like having hands-on body work. It can be a very subtle feeling. And then, how do you know that what you were working on is work? is working. Like I like to use an example of a client that came in once to clear a rat and snake phobia. Great. You ask, okay, is there anything coming up about this? Yes, there is. Let's clear it. You clear it and then they leave. And then how do you know? Well, I knew because they texted me a couple weeks later after they had seen a rat in Whole Foods and didn't freak out about it, <laughs> right? And they and normally if they they would freak out about it, never go back to that store, never do anything, but they were there was no reaction to it. It was just kind yeah. of like, okay, that happened and so sometimes as practitioners, we don't always even see the results of what we're working on and like, how do we know? And I was just wondering if you have anything to say about that. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a very good one. And I always, one of my favorite things that I say to all my clients that I got from a teacher of mine is notice what you notice. Because I may be coming in saying it's about X, allergies or knee pain or a relationship or something. And what really may be going on when we're working at that root of it, at the level where we work at SRT, we could be shifting not only that knee situation or the allergy or the relationship, we could end up shifting a number of other things. And sometimes the thing that I think I'm coming in with is not really the thing at all. And so before we even get to that, we're drawn into something deeper or something different. My favorite example um, of this is a woman who I had a session with, uh, she was in Colorado and we had never met in person. It was our first session together and she was calling about relationship, a relationship pattern she had become aware of that she wanted to change. So we do this, we work for an hour and at the end of it, she's like, oh, I can totally, I feel totally different. And she threw her arms up and then she said, oh my gosh, this, sh this shoulder has been frozen for years. And it opened it up, but the same thing that was holding that relationship pattern in place was holding the, the shoulder in place, right? So sometimes it's not what we expect. Sometimes it is what we expect. Sometimes, right. you know, the thing that was holding one thing in place, we start to see things change all over our lives, which is why I'll say, notice what you notice, because it's it may not be specifically about that thing. You may see, you may very well see changes ex manifest in, in a number of different areas. Yeah, and the connections between things it sounds like she didn't realize that her frozen shoulder could maybe have anything to do with emotional or mental or spiritual patterning. And then when you removed it or facilitated its removal, oh my gosh, I could lift my arm and wow, that's interesting. You know? Right. And I, I see that all the time too. And I think, it, I think those connections are fun because it really, it, it continues to reinforce for me and I think for our clients 
that there's that there's that little thing at the root, you know, that original seed, if you will, that runs through so many things. And I, I think our society um, is so inclined to compartmentalize, right? Oh, there's this on the physical level. There's this on the really emotional level. There's this on the financial or my business or my whatever. When re it is all one thing. Yes, we like to put things in boxes, and you know, really, all the boxes kind of boxes kind of blend together after a while. Right, the boxes. <laughs> Um, no, that was really well said and, and well articulated. Is anything else coming up right now that you'd like to share around SRT that maybe we didn't touch on, but is kind of like, you know, present? I would simply say that I love how useful it is in my work with clients and my work with myself. But I really, in addition to encouraging people to experience it, I actually really encourage people to, to learn it because when you can do it for yourself, again, it's not even about the whole method, but just that piece like you were saying earlier about how, how much more aware we are of, of where we are in our relationship with our high self creation, however we think of that. That itself, I think, can be life changing for people uh, and gives us access to so much more of ourselves and so much more in the world that even if you have no intention of practicing with people to to be able to learn that part of it right just take the level one or something I think is is just so extremely valuable in our own discernment and our own our own experience of ourselves and our truth I don't know how else to say it yeah no that's great and actually you mentioned level one what would be like just as like synopsis of how someone would go about learning SRT? Um, so there are, uh, I think there are two, there's an, a, a, a beginner and an advanced, and then there is a self-mastery, which is part of the certification program. So the SRA, the Spiritual Response Association website, has information about classes that are all over the country, all over the world. Excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. And, you know, I, I've expressed this to you many times. I'm, I, you have facilitated my awakening experience in so many different ways in the last four years, and SRT has been an enormous part of my awakening and continues to be an enormous part of my awakening. As, as, some, as somebody going through a, a personal awakening and also as a, as a means of helping facilitate other people's awakenings as well. So, you know, you've, there's, the ways in which you have helped me in my personal process are innumerous. And I want to thank you for that. And um, and SRT has been like one of the huge pillars standing in the middle of that. And I'm I feel grateful to be able to share this with our listeners and to share you with our listeners. It's a tr it's a treat and an honor for me. Well, thanks. And since we're in the realm of the metaphysical, you are me and I am you. Right. And so your involvement <laughs> is my involvement and vice versa. And so that's part of what's fun about all of this mm -hmm. is what we're doing for another or what we're doing for ourselves is really for all of us. And that's, that's, I think the, the greatest thing that any of us can be doing right now is, is how do we support the evolvement of consciousness for everyone and everything because everyone and everything is also us exactly i love that <laughs> <laughs> thank you and just lastly how can folks how can folks learn more about what you do and find you if, if they're interested yeah so um my website is just my name.com so katherine and uh and there's information there awesome yeah yay thank you so this much this has been katherine. so much fun renata thank you so much yay I hope you enjoyed our episode with Katherine Krupka today. I just love the modality of spiritual response therapy, and I'm really excited for you all to have heard about it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you look it up through her website and give it a try if you are interested. It has profoundly changed my life. I know it has profoundly changed her life and has just really made things in the lives of our clients so much clearer and unimpeded. Before we sign off, I wanted to let you know about an opportunity coming up. My partner Julia and I are launching a course called Realize Your Highness. This is a course to advance and integrate your awakening experiences. This is an eight-week online intensive for folks 
who are in the process of waking up and are understanding more about the unseen world and more about their truest authentic expression and want to keep that continuing. Realize Your Highness is for folks who are looking to level up. People who are ready to step into their high self and are willing to transform their lives to do so. It is led by me and my partner, Julia, who has 10 years of experience with plant medicine, awakening and integration, as well as experience with Tantra and Kundalini awakenings. Between the two of us, we have spent over 20 years and $100,000 in transformational study and trainings. And our program reflects the best of the best of these tools. We act as a support team to ground and integrate the higher vibrations and wisdom received during your awakening processes into daily life all while providing access to the Realize Your Highness community of folks on the same Highness journey. We first led this course over the summer with great success, and our next one starts on October 28th of this year. So if this interests you, please check us out for more information at www.realizeyourhighness.com. We are seeking the most fully aligned clients possible for this course, and I know that you, as a listener of Let's Get Metaphysical, might be one of those people, or most likely you know someone who this course might be perfect for. If that's the case, please do share the information. We are looking to form a very high vibrational, loving, growth community with this course starting on October 28th. Come check us out at www realizeyourhighness.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find more information about spiritual response therapy at www.katherinekrupka.com. If you're enjoying Let's Get Metaphysical and want to help us keep making new episodes, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash let's get meta. Let's Get Meta is a production of the HANA Healing Arts Network. The show's host is Renata Maniachi. Audio editing and production by Zoe Ravenwood of Hatfish Digital Media. The voice of the credits is me, Aries. Thanks so much for listening.